We are live. Yeah, hey everybody. Hello, shout, hello. shout, shout. Charlie, you had that thing going. So. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's cooking, man. <laughs> oh, that was excellent. We had a great time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, listen, guys, welcome to our In the Word. And I like to say into the word as we dig into the word. And uh, we're going to get into the book of Acts things off and uh just kind of share what we're going to get it in joe we lose you oh you guys hear me okay i'm back yeah you were frozen <laughs> uh, okay yeah go ahead greg go ahead and kick it off for us yeah so um Joe and Charlie are uh, having their program uh, on Thursday nights, and they asked me to join going back to the last gathering. And on Thursday evenings, I'm doing a lot of tutoring, a lot of teaching of students online. So I wasn't able to join them, but I said, I'd still love to get together with you guys and do something in the Word of God. I feel like there's a real need for biblical understanding and revelation for God's people especially the stuff that's not getting in a lot of churches like pertaining to the holy spirit outpouring of the holy spirit pentecost gifts of the spirit you know all that that was such a vital part of kim's ministry you know and the church that i came from on long island upper room um we need to keep that going we need to keep that alive god's pouring it out on a whole new generation now and so I, I believe that we who have been seasoned in Pentecost, it's up to us to like pass that torch to the next generation, share the, the truth of the gospel, share the truth of the book of Acts, particularly, because the pattern for the New Testament church is found in the book of Acts. You know, it's really the bridge between the four gospels and the epistles. The book of Acts is like a key book in the New Testament. And uh, Sean, if you want to put that, um, scriptures up there uh, what we have is I, I broke down this into slides um, and the book of Acts was written by Luke who is the same guy that wrote the gospel of Luke you know he was a physician and he was a disciple of Paul follower of Paul and then you know subsequently of course a follower of Jesus but he wasn't one of the original 12 and there's a lot of importance and significance to that I want to explain the Bible the New Testament is very different than the Quran in the Quran there's Allah God he gives revelation supposedly through the angel Gabriel to Muhammad and that's it it stops with Muhammad so either Muhammad gets it or Muhammad gets it wrong one or the other our God didn't do it that way. He right. gave it to four separate witnesses, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Two of them were eyewitnesses. Matthew and John were one of the were each part of the 12 disciples. And yet Luke and Mark were like second generation Christians mm. that learned from others. And they all had the same testimony. They all shared the same truths, which is remarkable. You know, the Bible says in the mouth of two or more witnesses, let every word be established. So God gave us four witnesses 
that all bear testimony to Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that he died, raised from the dead, ascended into heaven, sits at the right hand of God, pours out the Holy Spirit. You know, it's all there. And mm -hmm. of all of that, the guy that was the most detail-oriented is this man, Luke. Um, it says in Luke, uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 1, The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Now, that he's talking about his gospel, the gospel of Luke. Um, the, who, who did he write to? He wrote to this guy named Theophilus. He was probably mm -hmm. a real person. And the name means friend of God or lover of God. So he was probably a wealthy benefactor of Luke. Why? Because in those days, to write a book as long as the Gospel of Luke or as long as the book of Acts costs money. There's no photocopiers. There's no internet. No computer keyboards. No typewriters. Everything is done by hand on parchment, right? So the estimate I read to produce a book the size of the Gospel of Luke in those days, in our money, would be about $7,323. And do the same thing for the book of Acts, that's about wow. $14,600. So he needed somebody with some ka-ching that was going to back him in this endeavor. Sort of like Charlie, if you go into a studio, you want to lay down a you know 24-track song, you need a producer, right? You need somebody that's going to come up with some cash and buy the studio time, maybe rent some, mm -hmm. you know, really good studio musicians to work with you, put it all yes. together. <clears throat> yes, that's what it's, it's, it, it's called an executive producer. The executive yeah, right. producer is the one that's behind, producer. Yeah, behind the finance. The guy with the money, the guy with the bling is going to be the exec producer. That's probably who Theophilus was here. Somebody that wanted to learn more about God and Luke wrote it all down, and also did it for our benefit. So you could say, if you're a lover of God, this is written to you. You know? Uh, everything right. was written until the day in which he, Jesus, was taken up. After that, through the Holy Ghost, he had given commandments to the apostles whom he chosen, to whom he showed himself after his passion by many infallible proofs. He appeared from the time he was resurrected for a period of 40 days, probably at least 10 or more times to his disciples. In one case, to 500 of them or more at once. That'd be enough to convict somebody in court, right? 500 <laughs> oh, eyewitnesses, yeah. I would think so. Well, you Jesus know what's not? Be raised from the dead, yeah. Right. <laughs> you, know, you know what's so amazing here is uh, I, I, I want to, you know, just touch on this one small thing that you said, and and those that are listening, I, I I know probably you heard the same thing. Here it is, Luke writing. He had no copier. He had no internet. He had no uh, right. You right. know, I mean, everything had to be done, and he had to get this out right, and it cost money. So many in the religious establishment today, okay, today. I am still choo choo. Yeah, that's right. Let the love train continue. To... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's on my end. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, great. <laughs> but but uh, you know, we 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 get so caught up in finance. We have so many people that are saying, "Well, you know, in church, you know, why you always needing money? You need it, you know. You want money here, you want money there." But look at the equivalent of what it costs, Luke just to write the very gospel that you with that religious mindset have read the very right. book of acts with you with that religious mindset have read you saying that money you know why you always wanted money i remember my son was going to uh uh you know he went to a uh a christian university and you know he would talk with some of the ultra religious mm -hmm. students there and they would always talk about his father me i work in the you know i work for prophet kim clement this is this is my income i'm a minister and they and, and they will always hit my son up with oh so how does he get paid 
Well, he gets paid for doing the work. Well, why should he get paid? See, that's the problem with so many ministers and ministries today. You know, they always wanted money. This right here, that revelation that you just laid out right now is so powerful, everyone, because it yeah. takes ka to get the gospel out. Jesus had a treasurer. His name was Judas. He was even stealing from Jesus, and Jesus knew it. So it takes that. So that's very powerful. I just wanted to highlight that because, look, guys, we need to get religion out of the way. Yeah. Religion yeah, yeah, is yeah. the poison. Okay. Continue, oh, yeah. Greg. That's so powerful. I didn't know that. That is so good to know. Yeah. Yeah, he shows himself alive. Jesus shows himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days, meaning from the day of the resurrection, which we call Easter, for a period of 40 days afterward, he shows himself over and over again to his disciples. And then being assembled with them, he commands them they should not depart from Jerusalem. So just before he leaves, he said, guys, don't go anywhere. Don't go back to Galilee. Don't be hanging out, you know, in, in uh, Emmaus or wherever. You stay here in Jerusalem. I got a job for you to do. Your job is to wait for the promise of the Father, said he, which you heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. I'm going to pour out the Holy Spirit from the Father and I on you in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Not many days from that. It took totally 10 more days. So it was from resurrection to Pentecost was a total of 50 days. Mm -hmm. And if we yeah. uh, just advance this to the next slide. It says, uh, when therefore they come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Whoa, whoa, time out. He's talking about being filled with the Holy Ghost. And all they are thinking about is a political kingdom. They thought Jesus was going to be a Messiah like David or Solomon that was going to rule in bodily form on the earth, throw off the Romans, and make Israel a sovereign nation. That was their thing. That's what they wanted. That's what they hoped for. They still, right. even after the resurrection, they still didn't get. It's not going that way. Jesus said, my kingdom's not of this world, guys. Now, eventually, right. you're going to return in power. And the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, but not yet. There's a whole church age in between, gentlemen. So what does he say? Uh, he said, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the Father's put in his own power. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. That is so powerful. And that whole red letter section right there. The words of Jesus yeah. in the King James are in red. Why is that? He said, first of all, I'm not saying it's not going to happen. All I can tell you, the father put that in his own power. It's in his authority. Only he knows when that's going to take place. So don't you sweat it. That's not your job. That's not your mission. You are to receive power. To be filled with the Holy Spirit is to be filled with the power of God. You need to be spirit filled to live as a Christian in this world and right. to be a witness. Jesus, I've heard yeah. it said very well put trying to live as a Christian in this world is like trying to stay clean in a cesspool. It has mm. to be supernatural. You like that, Joey. <laughs> That's right. It's got to be true with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Because there's yeah. sin everywhere. There's evil everywhere. There's wickedness everywhere. And in order to be set apart, to be sanctified, to be consecrated unto God, you need power. And that is the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Ghost. And he right. said, then you're going to be witnesses to me. And it's going to start in Jerusalem, and it's going to spread it out in larger and larger circles from there. It's going to go to Judea. 
and then even north to Samaria, and eventually to the uttermost parts of the whole. I love it. And then yeah, after good. he speaks these things in verse 9, while they mm -hmm. beheld, while they're watching, he's taken up out of their sight, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And when they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which said, you men of Galilee, why stand you there gazing at the heaven? What are you doing, guys? Why are you doing that? You're looking up at <laughs> the sky. A lot of Christians are still doing that. They're waiting for the rapture. Lord, mm -hmm. you know, they're waiting for Armageddon. Armageddon out of here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's that going to happen? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. He said, wait a second. That same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, so shall come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. He's coming back the same way you saw him leave. Hollywood. Right. Joe, what do you think? Oh, yeah. I want you to go back to um, the first slide because um, there, there was something that was said that was so specific. And, um, you know, we were talking about Jesus uh, staying another 40, 40 days. And, you know, uh, uh, on the other slide, the disciples talk asking about the kingdom. But they missed something that Jesus said. I mean, you know, that was stated in the scripture. Look what it says at verse three. It says, to whom he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and, because a lot of people skip this scripture, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. All right. So he's speaking to them things pertaining to the kingdom of God. But I guess they still didn't get it because they're still asking about when this kingdom is going to come. But look what he says. Yeah. He, he says, he says, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem because he's talking about things about the kingdom. So now he's in, in going forward. He's talking about when the kingdom is going to come. And this is this is what he says. But wait for the promise of the father, which said he ye have heard of me for john truly baptized with water but ye shall be baptized with the holy ghost now who is the holy ghost when it pertains to the kingdom of god because they the pharisees asked jesus this question the same question when is this kingdom going to come and jesus said yeah. this he said it's not about it being there or here but the kingdom of god is within you little did the disciples know that jesus is telling them to wait in jerusalem because the kingdom of god is going to come who is who Righteousness, Holy peace, Spirit. and joy in the Holy Ghost. In the Holy so, Ghost. You got it. So they didn't they didn't realize that the kingdom of God was coming. Jesus was trying to set them up so that they could receive the kingdom of God, which is the Holy Ghost in us, is the kingdom of God within us. So I just wanted to point that out real quick because as we get into the book of Acts, the Bible talks about how the kingdom of God is not just in word, but it's in power. We're going to see the in power yeah. of the kingdom of God. You know, it's not going to be about persuasive words because Paul said, look, I didn't come with persuasive words, but I came showing the, the, the kingdom of God. I, I came showing the manifestation of the kingdom of God. And so we got to have a mindset, like Greg says, we got to get away from this religious stuff because religion is kind of opposite or uh, uh, it's kind of a counterfeit of the kingdom of God. And when you understand the kingdom of God, it's not about just, you know, persuasive words and all this theology. I know more than you. I know this and that. No, it's about practicing what you preach the power of god the gospel of the kingdom followed with signs of wonder so i just wanted to point that out real quick greg yeah, yeah that's and, great. and and was, and yeah go ahead, joe yeah uh uh yeah, go i was just thinking about that too and you know what's interesting everyone is that you know uh, we need to know that they are no different than you and i you see the fallibility here. You see them doing the things, saying the things and acting a certain way. And Jesus has said, wait, 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 listen, 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 do this. And the reason why I'm saying this to each and everyone that's tuning in now that will tune in. You see, whenever you ask the question, I don't know how to do this or how can I hear the voice of God? Know that you were in good company, that you are in good company because listen, they had God himself saying things to them, speaking about the kingdom, and they were still not getting it at that moment. But here's what they did. They obeyed. 
Yeah. It wasn't very clear to them. It wasn't. It wasn't Good. very clear what Jesus was saying. I mean, they, yeah. you know, now they had witnessed Jesus doing all of these marvelous things, and yet and still, you know, they still scratched their head. But the one thing that they had in common with each other, and then they, uh, when we get to Acts 2, it's really going to get very interesting. Because, see, he's not talking to 120 here. He's just talking to his disciples. You see? Right, Greg? Am I correct yeah, in saying that? Yeah. yeah, that's right. And so, and, and so uh, 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 they did one thing right. They obeyed and they waited. The book of Isaiah said, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew. And everything that Jesus said, though they didn't have a complete understanding at that moment, out of their obedience in waiting and doing what Jesus said, wait, tarry, for he's coming soon. Then mm -hmm. these things begin to become clearer and clearer. Then you see Peter walking. His shadow is healing people. Man, we seeing them walking in all authority. So wait upon the Lord and be obedient and watch and see what God does because this is why yeah. we're doing this, everyone. We're doing this because he is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh, yes. not just yes. some flesh, not right. just this particular flesh. He's not picking people. There is no uh, society that's greater than the other. There is no special group or special club that Jesus is pouring out his spirit upon. No, right. all flesh. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out. That's great. You know, I was going to comment, uh, Joe, about the appearances of Jesus. After the resurrection, he appears first to Mary Magdalene. Then he appears to Mary, Salome, and Joanna. Then he appears mm -hmm. to Peter. Then he appears to Cleopas and his companion on the road to Emmaus. Then he appears to the disciples without Thomas that night. Thomas mm -hmm. picked a bad night not to go to church. <laughs> yes, you know, you don't go to church. That could be the night that God shows up. You know what I mean? He shows up. That's for sure. Amen. A week later, though, they got to Thomas because Jesus shows up again, and this time Thomas was there. Then he appears to uh, seven disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, John 21, verses 1 to 23. He appears to a group of disciples and a large gathering at Galilee in Matthew 28, verse 16 and 17. And then he appears at the Ascension. So all that different times he appears, and that's only what's recorded. It doesn't record everything right. that happened. He may have appeared mm -hmm. at various other times in that 40-day interval. But then, you know, the time has come now. Uh, they had a little bit of business to take care of here before the outpouring. And what did that um, consist of? Let's go through that. So the angels say, you know, why are you standing there looking up into heaven? Jesus is coming back the same way you just saw. Mm. Then verse 12 says they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olive, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. That would be about um, three quarters of a, a mile, I believe. And mm. when they were come in, they went into an upper room where abode both Peter, James and John. Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, son of Alphaeus, Simon Zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James. They all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, with his brethren. Whoa. I saw that one day, many years ago, as a young Christian. And it dawned upon me, she was one of the 120 in the upper room. So she was mm. filled with the Holy Ghost wow. and spoken in the Wow. Place. So if you ever want to witness to a Catholic that has a hard time with this tongue stuff, tell them, well, if you believe in Mary and you were on her, you better follow her and do what she did, which is go into the upper room and be filled with yes. the Holy Ghost and speak in other tongues the way Mary did. Yes, it's in the I scriptures. It's right there. I showed, I showed it out of a Catholic Bible to a, a young woman years and years ago. Blew her mind. Mm. She didn't know it was in there. Wow. But I'm glad it's there. 
Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brethren. So he had other, you know, half brothers. You follow? Um, that were uh, there in the upper room also. Verse 15 says, in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. Uh, the number was about 120. That's where we get that from. He said, men and brethren, the scripture must needs have been fulfilled, uh, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spoke before concerning Judas, which was God to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased the field with the reward of iniquity. Stop there. That's not the 30 pieces of silver he got. He gave that back. He felt guilty after betraying Jesus. What's the reward right. of iniquity? That's all the money he skimmed off the top because he was the treasurer, as Charlie said. Hmm. He used to help himself to whatever was in the bag. Mm -hmm. You know, he was the bag man, but he would just pocket the money. That's his reward of iniquity. And what does he do? He falls headlong and he bursts asunder in the midst. All his bowels gushed out. He hung himself in the field that he bought. And when he hung himself, and something must have happened, probably the rope broke, and his, uh, he probably lands on a stone or something, and it rips him to shreds. All his bowels gush out. Terrible way to, to end. This was known unto all the dwellers of Jerusalem, inasmuch as that field is called in the proper tongue of Keldera, that is to say, the field of blood. It's Judas's blood. For it's written in the Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, and no man dweller in, and let his bishopric another take. Wherefore, of these men which you have company with us, from that time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John, unto the same day that was taken up from us, one must be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. You know, 11 in the Bible is a symbolic number, and it's a symbolic number of disorder, confusion, incompleteness. 12 is a symbolic number of divine government. So they needed 12. <coughs> they had to replace the guy that fell away. And so what do they do? They called two. They appointed two. Joseph called Barsabas, who was surnamed Justice, and another named Matthias. And they prayed and they said, Lord, thou Lord, which knows the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Now they didn't have the Holy Spirit yet at that point. So they really couldn't hear from God the way we can now in the New Covenant as born-again spirit-filled believers. You follow? So they did what they right. did under the right. Old Testament. They used lots. Mm -hmm. They would cast dice. Okay. Right. You know, snake eyes, box cards, <laughs> lucky sevens. Come on. Yeah. So they did it that way. Yeah. God honored it. But that's all they knew to do. And they right. prayed, you know, Lord, you show us which one. Let the lot go on the right guy. That's all we can do. Right. And, yeah. and once again, uh, here is religion. A sacred cow is being slayed. It's, mm -hmm. it's being slayed right there. And it's right here in scripture. There it you is. See? Uh, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, and that's why I'm glad we're doing this, guys, because people really need to know that when the word says that he who is one with Christ, okay, those who are in Christ is free. And they are free indeed. And so God is not the one, or God is not one that is sitting there pointing the finger and pointing out every sin that we do. As a matter of fact, God never points out our sin. He really doesn't. The Holy right. Spirit is the one that convicts, but the Holy Spirit comes upon us can, and, and he convicts what? 
in love and with love. Right. So God is not, oh, oh you sinned for this, you did this, you're wrong. No, 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 no. And and I just love this. They cast in lots, you know. Oh mm -hmm. man, don't go to Vegas. Don't don't go to Vegas, man. That's Sin City, man. You gambled all, man. That's God will strike you down. Well, he didn't strike these guys down by casting lots. <laughs> yeah. Didn't strike him down. Right. So I just think it's beautiful, man. Yeah. Look, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Right. I mean, it's, it's that's what religion does. Religion will condemn, you know, right. uh, but the Holy Spirit doesn't do that. He convicts in love. But right. it's like the Holy Spirit even used that, them casting locks to be able to choose the right person that he wanted. Right. And, and see, and please don't get it twisted. Anyone out there that's listening that would twist what I just said don't get it twisted i'm mm -hmm. not saying yeah so now let's go and gamble i'm not saying right. that we're right. saying that there's no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus so in other right. words seek his face seek him discern what he's saying and keep your eyes off of iniquity and keep your eyes focused on revelation you know you know god yeah. said this to me and i don't mean to go off kel to hear greg but I I, I, no, I I just well you know strip uh, script but you know um, someone um, wanted to know whether or not they should bring a certain prophet or a certain minister to their church because they were wanted to have they wanted to have a big meeting there and so I, I was called to get my opinion on it what do you think and I said well what was the decision and they said well we've heard this about this person and we've heard that about this person so they decided not to have them and i said well this is what rises up in my spirit we shouldn't seek intel on mm. each other what we need to seek is revelation for right. each other because it is from revelation now the gates of hell can't prevail now you have right. keys you have revelation god will show you exactly what to do but if you seek intel you're seeking knowledge from man common carnal knowledge and intel opens the door for the gates of hell to prevail and that's that's what's wrong with, uh, with religion so once again i know i probably went off script a little bit but everyone that's listening this yeah is really, really good for us mm -hmm. to dig into this scripture because see, this is what is about to start happening and it's already happening. The Holy Ghost is being poured out just like it did at Azusa Street. You see, it got poured out and things got a little twisted there after a while, but I believe that this next outpouring is gonna last, it's gonna last. It's gonna last until the time for us to be, whether we're gonna be caught up in the sky raptured, I'm not gonna say that, but I know that this is gonna last until everyone that will call upon the name of Jesus will call upon the name of Jesus and this great harvest will be reaped. So that's why I think this is so cool that we're doing this, I'm loving it. <laughs> we're looking at the Bible with religion colored glasses. <laughs> right. God wants to take those religion colored glasses off to Come see on. the Bible for what it really says. Tear oh, right. down the walls of tradition that have blinded yeah. us to so many truths. That's what we want mm -hmm. to do, a dig, dig deep into what the word actually says. Not what we've heard it says, but what it says. Right. Come on. Sometimes you got to search that out in the Greek or in the Hebrew or just different translations and, and get before God, get revelation, understanding, and knowledge. And God will mm -hmm. give it to you if you hunger for it. <coughs> he compares wow. it to seeking silver and gold. You know, mm -hmm. you don't find gold just lying on the street most of the time. Very rare, right? Mm -hmm. Where yeah. do they got to dig it from? You got to go into Unless a stream or a mountain or whatever. <laughs> you know, pick and shovel and all kinds of stuff to find gold. Then you got to right. refine it and purify it. And then it becomes usable for something. That's what the word of God's like. You got to dig, you know, but not dig like this. Let's take right. these, yeah, rose colored glasses. Well, these are happen right. to be blue, closest I can get, right? Yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah, make my yeah, brown so eyes true. blue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's so true. And, and, you know, speaking to that, Greg, you know, it, it's funny how um, 
the traditions of men <laughs> is what Jesus had to struggle against to get across the word of God to people. You know, he told the, the, the Pharisees that, um, you know, they put the, the traditions of men above the word of God. And that's what they were doing. And, and so we can't do that. We got to take traditions that we've heard and consider it. But if it doesn't line up with what God has said and what he has shown you, then we got to do away with those uh, those traditions. You know, we have to consider those as traditions of men, and that's just what it is. But we have to go forth and allow the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus said the, the Holy Spirit will teach us all things. He will guide us into all things. And so we can't allow man, men to guide us into all things. We got to allow the Holy Spirit to do it. He's the one that gives us uh, revelation of the word of God. And we can't always, nowadays especially, we can't always follow everybody's even commentary or philosophies we got to be able to walk by the spirit all right because you know the bible talks about in uh in the last days in which we are in the, the last days uh there will be itching ears and so we see a lot of itching ears where you hear you know people looking for uh, uh different inspirational words and and different uh words from people who they see on tv but it's time out for that you know we can't be going around with itching ears but we got to have an ear to hear what the spirit of the lord is saying and that's what revelation says we got to hear what the spirit of god is saying to us so you know that's something we we have to really do and and i just want to encourage everyone to hear what the spirit of god is saying in this live broadcast yeah i mean something uh, else i want to no no yeah, okay go ahead on great yeah something else i was going to say though about this particular uh end of chapter one matthias was selected and numbered among the apostles. So he becomes the 12th, the 13th apostle, actually. Right. And if you would study it out, which you might get to in the future, there's a total of 25 people in the New Testament called apostles. So anybody that thinks, well, there was 12 and there's only 12, no, 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 you didn't read your Bible. That's right. Paul was an apostle. Barnabas was an apostle. Come on. I can go through a whole list of people and show you where it says it chapter and verse these were apostles uh the ministry of the apostle is still for today the ministry of the prophet is still for today That's right. you know there should be a five-fold ministry not a three-fold ministry a lot of churches have maybe a three-fold ministry they have a pastor Come on. they got an evangelist and maybe a Come bible on. teacher that's it and a church secretary and they think that's that's the whole <laughs> enchilada no no whoa 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 there's more to it than that. The right. foundation is the apostles and prophets. And yeah. that's not just back then, you know, in uh, 30 AD. It's for today. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changes yeah. not. And he gave yeah. gifts to the church. And nowhere did it ever say he took them out. Right. Amen. So, you, know, you know, right. Good job. Uh, yeah. Uh, I want to expound on the... Uh, Mother Mary being a, uh, you know, being filled with the Holy Ghost, you know. Wow. There, there, there's been multiple prophecies that God spoke through Prophet Kim Clement about the Holy Ghost invading and coming. And I use that word loosely, invading, because basically he has to because of the religious uh, uh, veil that has really been placed over the Catholic Church. And, and, but the Holy Ghost is visiting and has visited and is going to increase. It's going to be a visitation and it's going to be not just a visitation, everyone, but it's going to be a habitation. The Holy Ghost is coming upon our flesh. But it reminds me of this testimony that I heard from Dave Robeson. He's the one that prophesied that I would be traveling with the prophet for all of these years. So he gives a testimony of this Catholic lady. She had MS and 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 she she was devastated by the news of having MS and she had a very aggressive form of MS. It was really taking her out. And so she wanted to be healed. And so she began to seek healing. She went to every, of course, every doctor said, man, you got MS, we don't have a cure for that. So she began to go to the church. So she went to a, a, a charismatic service and she went before uh, 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 the ministers there and she got prayed to be healed, but she wasn't healed. 
And then so she went to the Church of God in Christ where the Holy Ghost was present and people were shouting and dancing and falling all out and everything. She went to get prayed for. She didn't get healed. Then she went to Baptist Church. She went to all of these uh, 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 different denominations seeking a healing because she wanted to be healed from MS. This reminds me of a particular woman in the scriptures, the woman with the issue of blood. She went to many places, many doctors. She was seeking to be healed because she knew that she should and could be healed. You see, that passion and that drive, that determination is what God loves. It's passion. That's why I love the name of that movie, Passion of the Christ. It was passion that drove him to the cross. Passion, that passionate love that he has for all of mankind. Finally, she couldn't get healed from going to all of these different services and being prayed for the laying on of hands, which we're going to be talking about here. So you know what she did? She went back to her Catholic faith or belief and she prayed this particular prayer. She said, Mother Mary, if you are listening, can you please whisper and ask your son to come and heal me? That was her prayer. And it was such passion and such devotion behind that prayer. God heard it. And God came down and healed this woman of MS. And she was never the same again because then she felt the presence, the power, and the glory of the Holy Spirit. She was transformed when she was healed. Man, when I heard that testimony, man, that's just, it did me so good because once again, God slays the sacred cows of religion all the time. Charlie, I got to share a testimony my aunt shared with me along the same lines. Um, as a young woman, she was very, very devoted to St. Anthony. In Catholicism, they frequently, you know, pray to saints and all that stuff. So she would pray to him, you know, all the time. She had a shrine in her bedroom when she was single. Uh, pray to St. Anthony for this and the other. Thing. One night, she finishes praying, ready to go to bed. She feels a presence come in her room. It's not St. Anthony. It's Jesus. And he speaks to her wow. spirit. And he wow. says, it is I that have been answering your prayers. Hot heat. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she put the covers over her head in terror. <laughs> she says, and then when she looked again, he was gone. But that just shows that yeah. if you are Catholic or whatever, and God hears and answers your prayer, you know, it's the prayer of faith that God responds to. He works with people based on the knowledge they have, based on the light that they have. So if you have very little light, God will work with very little light. But the more light you have, the more he wants to give you. And then if you are in the light, then walk in the light, the Bible tells us. So right. for anybody out there that is praying for somebody, maybe a Catholic family member that is still bound, still praying to Mary or saints, oh, don't worry, don't sweat it. God knows how to reach them. You pray that they get revelation knowledge, that Jesus will come and reveal himself. I had a, a real prayer burden a few years ago for Muslims. And you know what I began praying? That the Lord would begin to appear to them in dreams and visions. And that many would come to Christ. You know that's happening right now? Amen. Millions of oh, Muslims yeah. around the world are coming to Jesus yeah. Christ. And no one's preaching to them. They're seeing him in dreams and visions. The right. mosques yeah. in Iran are largely empty because the women there have been converting to Christianity in record numbers without anybody telling them about Jesus. They're seeing him. So oh, yeah. God hears and answers his prayers. You know, it's just awesome. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's I got so I gotta share, I gotta share this testimony um because I feel like you know there are some people who are watching um and some people who may watch later on that 
they may have a question. They may have a loved one or somebody who might be in a coma and they may have a question. Well, uh, my loved one is in a coma and I've had experience with people who've been in a coma in the past and they passed away. Did they go to heaven or did they not? Well, listen to this testimony. Um, I have a friend of mine who I was working with years ago and he's a believer. He's been in the church um, for quite a long time, has a relationship with the Lord and everything. Uh, but he had a brother that was, uh, wasn't a believer. Well, he, he believed in God, but he, he was not in the church. Um, and so th my friend would minister to his brother and everything. And so, you know, his brother eventually, you know, just got kind of got away. And so his brother, um, was in a hospital, uh, uh, recently had came into a coma, had gotten into a, fell into a coma and, before he went to the coma, of course, he was in a hospital. He was awake and uh, my friend was able to go minister to him even more. Um, and so uh, my friend said why his brother was in a coma. He had a dream and he said this dream was so real. Um, and so he had a dream, what well, he calls a dream, but I think he was really seeing uh, in the spirit. Uh, he was seeing his brother speaking to Jesus. And Jesus was ministering to his brother while his brother was in a coma. Wow. All right. And Jesus led, of course, this brother to him. Jesus embraced him and, and was just telling him, you know, speaking to him and just really ministered to him. And so he's watching this whole thing. And so he wakes up and two days later, his brother passed away. And so when he told me this, he said he was he was saying you know, my brother passed away, but I know for sure he right. is with Jesus. He's with the father because he gave his life to Christ, even as he was in a coma. Come so on. Jesus, look, look, Jesus, this is biblical because what did Jesus do? Jesus went into hell to minister to the captives who were there and he set them free. So why couldn't he minister to your loved one? who could be in a coma that maybe you couldn't reach, but Jesus himself can reach. Um, so this is biblical. And so he said, he said, Joe, I believe my brother is in heaven and I'm going to see him again. So if that's you and you're watching this, this show and you may have a loved one who is, is maybe in a coma, you continue to pray for that loved one um, who, who may be an unbeliever and Jesus will come to them and minister to them. Wow. That's beautiful. It was amazing. Yeah, I read it was some, amazing. I've read some really remarkable testimonies of people that have had near-death experiences like that, Joe. And somebody mm. was praying. Somebody got a hold of God and wouldn't let go. And prayed, mm -hmm. Lord, wow. you, I'm not going to let them go. you got to save this person. I'm going to stand yeah. the gap for them. Instances, in some cases, the person already died. And the spirit mm. came back in their body. And then they gave their heart mm. to Jesus. There's four people wow. I know at least personally that have had near experiences where their spirit left their body. In some cases, they saw Jesus. In the case of my mom mother, her spirit was like floating above her body. Back in mm. 1994, she had sepsis in her body. Mm. Um, another friend of mine that um, had a massive heart attack died and came back and told about it. Another mm, man, mm. same thing. And, you know, then my uh, daughter, Nicole's aunt, mm -hmm. uh, also died and came back and met Jesus. Wow. You know, wow. It, on the other side, came back. It wasn't time yet. Um, so oh, God right. can do anything we can believe him for, you know, yes. and yes. don't limit. Don't put a yeah. limit on God. Don't put a limit so on God. Just continue to pray. Continue to pray for people. Don't be discouraged. Doesn't matter what it looks like. God wants them, loves them. Yeah. I, uh, I, if we can I, at least get into the beginning of God. Yeah, I was just gonna give one more testimony, man. It's so good giving these testimonies because what it does, it opens up the door for others to receive a testimony. That's what I learned from being with the prophetic. It is so beautiful to have a testimony because God. God loves loves our testimonies and the devil hates them because the devil knows that, oh my God, if he gives this testimony, that's going to witness to someone and that person is going to have a testimony. 
But just like what you just said with uh, your friends and, and, and uh, uh, Joe, you said the same thing. I had a friend that um, I played in a band when I was uh, first moved out to L.A. back in uh, in the uh, late 90s and 89. He was a brilliant guy. He was If there was a 10.0 grade point average, he would have had it. Okay, He was just super smart, but he was a, a atheist of atheists. Didn't believe in God, mm. but he came down with ALS. Okay, He came down with ALS. The two members of the band that we played in, myself and the guitar player, was the registered Christian spirit field. We would always talk about Jesus and all that, but you know, he didn't want to have anything to do with it. So real quickly, when he came down with ALS, of course, people were telling him, you know, you know, hey, you need to get to know Jesus and blah, blah, blah. I went and spent time with him. He moved from Los Angeles to Nashville. And when, when we were in Nashville ministering once, I went there and I spent some time with him. And, you know, he, he, you know, he was going out. Well, I had a dream. In this dream, he was standing on the stage with me and the team with Kim Clement. Kim Clement mm. hadn't made it out on the, on the platform yet. We were setting up, but the place was filled with people. And he was yeah. standing there, and, and I'm not giving his name right now because, I, it, it's, you know, that's not important, but he was, but, but he was standing there, and, and he was fine. He had his little DX7 keyboard. He loves that DX7, man. That's when I said, oh, my, my man, you brought the DX7. And, yeah. and, and the people was looking at him, and I got on the mic, and I say, everybody here, such and such. He just gave he just gave his life to Christ. He is now one of the warriors of the new millennium. And the place began to shout. Now his hair was still just bleach white because of ALS. You know, it's just I don't know why his hair turned that color, but it was bleach white. And so it was still mm -hmm. looking like that. And as the people were shouting, he said this to me. He said, "Yeah, Charlie." And then I said that he now he's healed. I left that out. Here he is. Mm -hmm. He's part of the Warriors of the New Millennium, and he's been healed of ALS. And the people start shouting, shouting, shouting. And as the people were shouting, everyone, he whispered in my ear, but Charlie, I'm still taking 30 cc's of this and 30 cc's of that. I said, that's okay, my brother. You heal. You heal. Like that. And he waved, and then I woke up. All right. So. I came back from a ministry trip and I was at a soccer practice with my son and I get a call from a good the guitar player that was one of the Christians in the band that we all played in and he said hey he's 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 he's, he's on his last leg man and uh so uh you know you you know we need to really pray for him and I said oh my god I had a dream about him and I remember when I first had the dream, I did reach out to him. I called him, but he didn't answer the phone. So I said, well, that's okay. I'll tell him later. But then when I found out that he was like, he only had maybe hours or maybe a day or two because it was really taking him out. It was important that I reached him. So when I got home, I was getting ready to call him. But, but then I noticed an email from him. And it was addressed to undisclosed recipients, which means a lot of close people on his mailing list, right? And, you know, that doesn't reveal who's on that list. In this email, everyone, he said, if I believe in God, here are seven things that I know would be true. And he lists these seven things. It was brilliant. It was off, but it was brilliant. He said, but since I don't believe in God, here are the seven reasons why I don't believe in God. And I, and I read it and I said, it was brilliant. I said, I have to call him. So God, please let him pick up the phone. So I called him. He picked up the phone. He could barely speak, but he was so joyful to hear me on the other side. I said, hey, bro, this is Charlie. And I almost asked the stupid question, how are you doing? <laughs> that would have been crazy, right? But I said, Hey, hey, my friend, I just wanted to touch base with you. I just wanted to touch base and, 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 and just reach out to you. And he said, well, thank you for calling. Thank you so much for calling. And I said, hey, I have to tell you something. I had a dream about you. And he said, oh, really? I, I tell him the dream. And he said, oh, that's so beautiful. I told him the whole thing about his hair being white. People are shouting. I said, you were healed of ass. I told him the whole thing. And he said, oh, that's so beautiful. And I said, I have the interpretation. And he said, oh, really? I said, yeah. I said, you know, when you whispered in my ear, you still have the, I, I, I'm still taking 30 cc's of this, 30 cc's of that. And I'm like, yeah. And he said, yeah. And I said, let me tell you what that means. God receives you and knows you for who you really are. And he created you this way. 
my friend, you are who you are because God created you this way. You see, with me, two plus two can equal three. But with mm -hmm. you, two plus two must equal four. And God says, that's okay because he made you this way. And he received you exactly the way you are. You know what he said? He said, Charlie, you have no idea how much hope you just gave me. Well, mm. first Timothy, one says, when Paul wrote to Timothy, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God, our, uh, our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, our hope. Mm -hmm. The minute he said that, he received Christ and God confirmed it. Because when I got off the phone, Charlie, that's the reason why his hair was still white. I mm -hmm. called him home and he is a part of the warriors of the new millennium. He's with me. I tell you, when I told Prophet Kim that, Kim wow. said, that was probably the, the most important phone call you ever made. I was bold in stepping out and I know that Denver is in heaven playing his DX7. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just had to tell that testimony. Awesome. Nice. That was good. That was good. Well, it's approaching the, the, the hour. We're going to... Um, Man, this is so good. This was so, so good. I, I know you you guys in the chat are enjoying this. Listen, um, while you're in the chat, you guys can also leave questions, um, you know, based on what we've been talking about as well. And, you know, we can we can get to those questions and, you know, kind of go at it um, and, and getting answers and getting revelation of those questions. So, you know, feel free to chime in. I know some a lot of people are leaving messages, but if you have any questions, feel free to leave questions. Yes. Um, but this is good. Any last words, fellas, before we end this? I know we're getting to the uh, top of the hour, and uh, we're going to continue this on next Monday. Yeah, we'll do uh, Acts chapter 2 next week. Just talk a little bit mm -hmm. about Pentecost itself to kind of uh, whet your appetite for it. Pentecost was actually a Jewish... Feast day. Uh, one of the main Jewish feast dates each year. Um, it would be called the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Harvest, or the Day of First Fruits. All mean the same thing. And Pentecost meant 50. It was 50 days after Passover. You follow? So, and it was yeah. one of the three days each year the Jews were obligated to go to Jerusalem. So the Lord waited till he had a big crowd there in Jerusalem for the outpouring to take place. God's got a timing for everything and a purpose yeah. for everything. It may not happen when you want. Jesus may not show up when you want, but he's always right on time. <laughs> Yes, he is. That's so good. That's so, so good. Yeah. Go ahead, Charlie. Any last words? That's going to be good next week. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad that, that you left that precursor. You know, it's it's a cliffhanger. Y'all have to tune in next week so we can yes. get deeper yeah. into because God is pouring out his spirit, everyone. We are going to see things that the earth has never seen before. You're going to hear sound. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're going to witness things. That you've never witnessed before and be encouraged because you're going to do things that you didn't think that you were capable of doing but god is pouring out his spirit upon you and those that have been faithful and those that have been obedient watch and see the exploits the signs and wonders that follow you because you are in his name we release that to you this night amen powerful powerful uh, Dr. Greg, you want to close us out in prayer if you could? Yeah, several people are expressing they want Pentecost. So I'm going to encourage each one of you to pray yourself to be receive the Holy Spirit. Come and on. we're going to be teaching on it. We're going to be sharing Acts chapter 2. We're going to pray for our audience to be filled with the Spirit of God. Yes. The devil hates it. Jesus is thrilled because he wants to kindle a fire, he said, on the earth. He's a fire yes. star. Hallelujah. Pyromaniac. Mm -hmm. He's going to torch this place. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes. Father, in yes. Jesus' name, 
We believe that you're going to pour out your spirit on all flesh. We thank you for our audience tonight. And we pray, Father, that there will be thousands and thousands and thousands that will come to hear the truth of Pentecost and be filled with the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the outpouring that's taking place on college campuses across the country. We thank you for many that are receiving the Spirit of God, and we desire to see that kindled everywhere, Lord. Let people understand. Let them hear your word on the subject. Let them receive revelation knowledge that will affect their soul and their spirit and impart faith to them, Lord, to receive, to know how to receive, Father, to become filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues that will revolutionize and change their lives forever. Lord, we thank you for being part of this ministry. We just give you the glory and the praise and the honor. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Go in the power of yeah. God, and we will see you guys next Monday. God bless.